be provided by, is it Linda Harmon? Linda Harmon, thank you for volunteering. So Linda, come on up to the podium and we'll have you say our opening prayer for us. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we're grateful to be here today, gathered as members of Preble City with the Preble City Council. We ask you to bless us and guide us through this meeting, that we're able to make good decisions, that we're able to discern right from wrong, that we can have a productive and uh, a productive outcome for this meeting. And we say these things in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Linda. The Pledge of Allegiance will be provided by Counselor Ellsworth. Please join us in the pledge. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Karen, how are you feeling about reading our preamble for us? Excited to. Okay. As indicated on the screen, a required public hearing will be held for the proposed property tax increase through the truth in taxation process as outlined in state statute. After the information regarding the proposed tax increase has been presented, time to comment will be provided for all those who wish to speak. During this public comment period, each speaker will be limited to two minutes. Due to noticing requirements, no formal action will be taken in this meeting. There will be a second public hearing during the Municipal Council's meeting on August 9th at 5.30 p.m. in this location, where during which the Council will vote on the final proposed budget for fiscal year 2022 to 2023 and the property tax increase being discussed tonight. Those with comments are invited to approach the podium. Those participating on Zoom will need to use the raise hand feature to indicate they wish to comment. The chair may choose to alternate between in-person and online commenters. Please begin your comments by stating your name and city of residence. To assist the city recorder with the minutes, we ask that those commenting in person to uh, print your name on a slip of paper. We have- Actually, I think we're, our, change, we're changing up Oh, we've up got that a different process. process. We're working on- being able to do that on a computer. It, um, we'll give you more details in a minute. And then online commenters, uh, we will share a link with you. Um, we'll just want to get your name and city of residence as well. And if you're participating online, you're going to want to um, dial in um, and then press star nine to indicate you would like to speak. So hopefully we don't have any issues with that. All right, so first we will have a, our, our, our agenda item today is a public hearing regarding setting the real property tax levy for municipal purposes for fiscal year 2022-2023. This will be presented by Karen Tapahe, our community relations coordinator. Okay, so um, I've asked Malia to show a video first. This is a really good explanation of how property taxes are handled in Utah. I think I think it helps set the stage for why we need to make these kinds of requests. So we'll start with that. It's taxes to any degree, but the property tax is probably the most loathed. But as far as taxes go, it is one of the more fair, equitable, and accurate forms of taxation. The offices of the assessor, auditor, commission, and treasurer make up the checks and balances within the county to make sure it stays that way. Property tax is often misunderstood. It isn't the county property tax. It is the county property tax bill. You see, the county collects taxes for all of the local entities. So even when a county doesn't raise taxes, but a city or school district does, they still fill the ire of the citizens. Generally, about half of the property tax goes to the local school districts and the remaining half is further divvied up among the county, city, and special service districts. Those dollars go towards resources to keep the community safe, building and maintaining infrastructure, like roads, as well as many amenities like parks and keeping pesky mosquitoes at bay. 
Recent headlines have focused on a handful of communities that are seeing budget increases this year. Those proposed increases by elected officials begin a process known as truth in taxation. Prior to 1985, if there was a large shift in property values, the local government could either have a windfall of revenue when values rose, or there would be a budget shortfall if the property values fell. The effect was local governments didn't have a stable revenue source to create a budget from. There was also no protection to the taxpayer from an ever-rising tax burden. This prompted a conversation among the Utah Taxpayers Association, Tax Commission, and the Utah Association of Counties to come up with a more dependable tax policy. What we got was truth in taxation. Under truth in taxation, revenue is limited to the previous year's budget, plus any new growth within the county. If there is a need to raise the budget, the county has to engage in a truth in taxation hearing and notification process with the public. The idea being that elected officials would think twice about raising taxes, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. Truth in taxation made the property tax more stable because it focused on revenue rather than the rate. When property values go up, the rate goes down. And when property values fall, the rate goes up because the budget stays the same as the previous year, plus any new growth within the county. It is the rate that changes. The stability of the property tax due to truth in taxation is best demonstrated by the recent recession. Income and sales taxes followed the trends of a down economy while the property tax held its own. The large shifts in property taxes and revenue of decades past have since smoothed out and local governments have a more stable source of revenue to budget from. Citizens have the peace of mind and transparency that local governments can't raise taxes without holding public meetings and going through the truth in taxation process. However, there is a sentiment by some that truth in taxation has worked too well. Some communities hesitate to raise taxes even as costs to the county from vendors have increased. Eventually, the budget gets stretched too thin and local government has to go through the process, usually resulting in a major tax hike. But the question remains. You'll have to watch for yourself to see what question remains. <laughs> it's just whether or not this is the right process. Um, so, uh, so at the June 7th council meeting, um, you as a council indicated a desire to raise the property tax here in Provo um, by 2.9% in the general operations portion. It's important to realize that the tax dollar that comes through um, our property taxes as Provo residents, of that amount, 17% is Provo in total, but that's divided between the general operations bonds like for the new city hall and fire station and then the library and the remaining amount is covered by utah county a couple of other small amounts like state charter schools central utah water conservancy which is doing a rate increase this year as well and the provo city school district which is doing a rate increase this year um, and i can tell you that those increases um, the way they have us do the notices are a little different. Um, so our, our Provo City one, the way that the state works it out on, on our notice, we would be raising our property tax budgeted revenue by 1.66%. Whereas um, Central Utah Water Conservancy District will be raising their budgeted revenue 29.23%. And then the Provo City School District will be raising their budgeted revenue by 38.14%. So that gives you an idea of the totals. I know um, as as um, notices were sent out on, on the property tax assessments this year, there were, there were definitely a lot of comments about those increases. Um, the, the important thing to note, I, I saw that the um, 
county clerk auditor mentioned that property values had gone up 40% this year. So it's not just a matter of, of um, these increases in the tax amounts. It's also property values and we're all, we're all facing it in our budgets. And um, so anyway, just wanted to point that out because I know that's a stressor for quite a few people in our community. Um, if you look, if, if so, the the two point nine percent on a home valued at four hundred sixty three thousand four hundred dollars would cost you three dollars and eighty seven cents more per year in your property taxes. Um, and then, Malia, if you can go up to the top of that page really quickly, you can see. Um, the, the green line there is how inflation has risen. The, um, it always keeps going up. And if you use that same hundred dollars starting in 1991, you can see where the amount of property tax that we're getting is going down. Um, our last increase was a 2.28% increase in 2015. And then prior to that, we didn't have one before 1991. Um, so it's, it's been a rare thing, but it's also hard to keep up with inflation costs when we don't raise it on a, a fairly regular basis. The, uh, and, and what I hoped people would get from that video is that the budget amount, the amount that Provo gets from the property tax stays the same, the actual dollar amount. And in order to get any more whatsoever, we have to raise that property tax percentage. Now, the, it's estimated that the increase that's proposed would bring in about $147,000. Um, and that, that's quite a small increase in our budget here in the city. Uh, I know some people have compared it to our previous one in 2015 went to fund an additional police officer. Well, in, in 2022 funds, it might fund a police officer, but not the officer's equipment. It, you know, costs have gone through the roof. So, uh, so in order to do something, you know, this is, this is one of the methods that the council has in front of it. Now, um, as, as we mentioned, this will be included in the August 9th meeting. When we um, are presented the final budget, you will have this increase included in there. At this point, there's been no specified item, just a general public safety concern that's being addressed. With, with this amount. Um, I know we, we have quite a few people here that, um, that are interested in, in saying some things. I just wanted to make sure that we had adequately explained that, that our portion of this, even though I, I know all increases are painful, they, it, is, it is relatively small and it's definitely needed when you see how much inflation has risen and we have not kept up. Um, counselors, do you have any questions for me at this time? Wow. Well, we've had a couple <laughs> presentations on this and a couple yeah. discussions. So I think right. most of the questions have been answered. <laughs> I'm just curious, what are some of the common questions that you've gotten from the public, if any? Most have just been, they look at the entire property tax assessment and are pretty stunned. And um, I know as a homeowner here in Provo, I, I have a hard time figuring out this whole process. And, and so usually I, I just have to break it down into, okay, Provo City's just one portion of this. There are several different entities and this is how we fund our public safety, our roads, our parks, you know, uh, many different things that we have going on. And you can see that this is not something we've taken lightly and just raised taxes constantly. It's, it's been a 2.28% increase in 31 years. So um, 
yeah, that's, that's usually the biggest question. Um, and then anyone who is concerned about their property value, that is something that the Utah County Assessor would have to answer. You can, there, are, um, there are ways to appeal. There's relief for some homeowners, property owners. So I would definitely check with the county to make sure you're taking advantage of any of those because, um, you know, some of those property values may have changed in a way that, that doesn't reflect what you would have expected in this economy or in your particular neighborhood. But um, that's not something the city can actually adjust for you. This is part of the county's process. And just to clarify, this is not the only truth in taxation hearing because uh, Central Utah Water Conservancy will have a truth in taxation hearing. Right. The school district will have a truth in taxation hearing. All the other entities involved will have their own hearings. Absolutely. And it's important to, to attend any of those that bring people concerned. So the Provo City School District is holding theirs on August 9th at 7 p.m. in the Dixon Middle School Auditorium. The Central Utah Water Conservancy District is holding theirs on August 22nd at 6 p.m. at their headquarters in Orem. And, uh, and those, all this information can be found with Utah County. Um, and if they give us a call, I'm sure we can link them up with the information as well. But I recommend people contact each of the taxing entities that they have a concern with. Rachel, go ahead, or Councillor Whipple, too casual. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So I just wanted um, for you to talk through a little bit of these numbers. So we had approved an increase of up to 2.9% right. for the city's general operating portion. Right. And on my tax, my little tax thing here, um, it shows that for just Provo City, period, so it's not dividing it out, Right. That I've got a percent change of 0.88%. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's what we've seen on some of the notices. So if you had that $463,400 uh, property, well, this is what's interesting. Their calculator actually gave $3.82 increase. So it'd go from $230.20 to $234.02. So um, hopefully that extra five cents doesn't hurt someone too much. But, but yeah, that's, that's the amount they gave us. And part of the calculation, um, they divided over all the areas of, of Provo Cities. And it's the tax rate that's changing. This is just the percentage of, of the dollar, each dollar that goes in so that that certified tax rate is based on property values so that we get the actual budget amount that that's set by you the council okay so uh, people shouldn't be worried that we set up to 2.9 and now it's 0.88 because that 2.9 was for a portion of provo city taxes right so the 2.9 percent is the is trying to think how this is always hard to explain um, yeah, so it's it's 2.9% only on Provo City's general operating, which is only 5% of that whole tax dollar. But when they put that the amount on your taxes, they are taking all of Provo's together. And that's what throws people off. I, I would love to have matching numbers okay. everywhere. But yeah, that that is what will confuse people. And it's a... It's a state and county process. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. I just wanted to, to be able to make those numbers a little yeah. bit clear in case people were looking at what we'd approved and, and were confused by what shows up on here. So thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Thank you, Councilor Whipple. Additional questions? Thank you, Karen. At this time, we'll go ahead and... Um, um, well... It says council discussion then open for public comment. Typically we would open for public comment and then council discussion, but no need for council discussion because there's no action today. So at this point, we'll go ahead and open up <clears throat> this item for public comment. Elizabeth, uh, our amazing Elizabeth is gonna explain how, uh, so the recorder needs to take down names. 
so that we can put it in the official notes. So Elizabeth's going to share um, how we're going to have you do that tonight. I'll just turn around so I'm facing the public. Um, so just for your information, usually we have um, members of the public line up, but rather than have you line up, um, my colleague Mark is back here with a laptop. And if you'll just go back to him, there's a form where you can type in your first and last name and then enter what city you live in. Um, and so then um, our chair, Travis Hoban, will invite you up by name, and that way you can return to your seat after you sign up. But that way we'll, we'll have the order and everyone who wants to speak. Um, and then as people arrive, we can remind them that they can sign up back there. Um, so you're welcome to go back to the back of the room to sign up now. Yeah. No. So Viviana Alonso, go, why don't you go first? Mr. Hoban had to step out, but. Um. Um, so I just got my new appraisal. <laughs> and um, when I look at the paper, my taxes have gone up about $100 every year. And with the new, um, the new paper, it says they're going to go over $500. And I'm like, <laughs> so. So uh, you're wondering why? Uh, yeah. It seems like um, my total. So when you put the numbers here, it's, it said, I don't know how they're paying only $4 more per year. Because in my taxes, it says $536 more yeah, per I wonder, year. Um, do we have anyone who uh, uh, available to help talk through somebody's bill if they, if, from staff? Or... Okay. Mr. Shipley can talk with you. Okay, thank yeah, you. it's okay. Yeah, it sounds like, it sounds like there's a, um... okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we have, uh, we'll, we'll uh, see if there's more to say about that, but uh, Linda Harmon, uh, please come forward. Hi, uh, my concern is, my I'm in the same belt shoes and my taxes are going to go up over $500 for next year if this goes through. Um, to me, it looks like most of that is for the Provo City School District. And I'm wondering if that's something that you all can address or is that something we need to wait for the next meeting? Okay, because yeah. that's abominable. 43% increase for Provo City School District. And there are those of us who live on fixed incomes and there are those of us who are seniors who have no kids in school anymore. And we get nailed every year for the Provo City School District taxes. And it's got to change. This can't. Where's that $500 supposed to come from? Like literally, I would like, I know I'm ranting at you guys, but I'm going to rant then too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what, what was the date again? For <laughs> next uh, Tuesday. Next Tuesday? August yeah, 9th. August, August 9th, 7 p.m. at Dixon Middle School. Okay, for the school district. Yeah. All right, uh, Pam Jones, please. Hi, I'm no stranger here, either in person or online. Uh, and usually I have something to complain about. <laughs> and tonight's no exception. Uh, I'd like to um, echo what the last speaker said about those of us who are on fixed incomes or low incomes or who have lost their employment or otherwise a uh, victim of inflation, which is gripping the whole country. Um, it, it's very frustrating because we feel like we have no place to go for relief. Uh, you folks being in the government have the, the gun to our head, so to speak. Um, we have no, no defense 
uh, I can't go to my neighbor and say, hey, give me some more money so I can pay my taxes. Um, I am wondering if you have a plan B or any way that you have de uh, determined can uh, cut costs somewhere. Um, that's all. Thank you. Richard Holloman. Yes, uh, similar boat. Uh, my concern is kind of a matter of trust that when you, when it's described as truth in taxation and right in there it says, so you can have the same amount each year and it's only an increase of 397 per year that it just, you know, and then the discussion is like, it's only a matter of figuring out it feels like, wow, you, somebody must think we're really not very bright about this. To call it truth, and you look at 397 in the document you send out, and the actual tax is nearly 20%. And we're all in this. It's like, if you're going to be truthful, then be clear. Be more, you know, complete. To have to go to the side and explain, we all want the same explanation. It's not in here. And it doesn't feel truthful. Please help. Any other comment from the public? Yeah, if you wouldn't mind, thank you. Okay, I'm Paula Grace, and I live in the Grandview area, and my taxes went up $724. Now, um, I have worked ever since I was 16 years old, and I love paying taxes, but is there a place that I could appeal to maybe get the wheels in motion to cap this? Um, I, can't, I can't afford to have this kind of increase, and... Uh, it would be wonderful if I could have a, um, a certain amount of taxes to look forward to <clears throat> that I felt comfortable with and, and fair. I'm 83 years old. I think seniors deserve a little bit of uh, attention on that area. I don't look forward to any taxes, Paula. Pardon me? I don't look forward to any taxes. You oh, yes, you do. <laughs> when it comes down to it. It, sure. Um, I, it's an honor to pay taxes, but enough is enough. And I will still pay taxes, but it needs to be more fair to the seniors. Nevin and Anderson. Hi, my name, my name is Nevin Anderson, as he mentioned, and I live in Provo up on Osman Lane. It's kind of an upscale neighborhood gated community. Um, <clears throat> I don't have any complaints. I just have questions, just a couple of questions. I see on my bill a line that says Provo City. Is that all we're dealing with tonight is Provo City? Okay, I would say as far as Provo City is concerned, congratulations. <laughs> my taxes actually went down by $2, according to this. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. Do you have any suggestions? I assume that you are not responsible for the Provo School District at all. 
Okay, so the, the I I kind of misunderstood. I thought we were to come and talk about the entire bill. Sometime. And you should see at the bottom of your bill, there's actually a list of three different meetings. I noticed and, that. And one of those is the school district meeting. Yes. Yeah. But you don't control the school district in any way, shape, or form. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, congratulations. And I'm all in favor of small increases on a regular basis. I, I think that's the most prudent way to do it. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nevin. Additional comments? Can we go a second time? <laughs> Unfortunately, no, but um, if you want to catch me after, catch any of us after. Um, so, Karen, we had a, a couple questions come up that I think, since public comment went short, I'm, I'm okay if you wouldn't want to get up and talk about, just to reiterate, this is only for the Provo City portion of the overall tax. So I know some were hit with $700 bills. I think mine was around $600. Um, the majority of that coming from the school board uh, or other entities, right? And then there were... Um, Let's see, what other questions? Did Changes in property valuations as well. Um, and and so the county handles- Well, hold on, Karen, I'm going to close public okay. comment first. Um, and, and we did just have one more person step up. Uh, okay. So Kathleen Christensen, go ahead and come on up. And then once we close public comment, then we'll have you address those questions that came up during public comment. Um. Okay, I, I have a couple questions. First off, I was told this meeting started at 6.30, but it actually started earlier. Hmm. Is that it? On, on my bill, it says 6.30. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm late then, I guess. But um, You're all right. You're, you're right on time. <laughs> well, um, now my property taxes have gone up every single year. So when you when this lady was explaining how we haven't been raising taxes. I was, that confuses me because I know my property taxes have gone up. Um, this year, it's over $700. If we don't have the proposed tax budget, if we do have the proposed tax budget, it's over $1,300. And to me, that's a little exorbitant um, when we have the economy we do. And um, people go to the grocery store. They have to pick and choose what they can afford to buy to feed their family. They go to the gas station. They go to pick and choose. Can they go visit family or must they stay home? And I'm wondering if Provo City doesn't have some things that they could also pick and choose about how they spend our tax money and how much they really need. Um, now, I I admit I'm very ignorant about a lot of things. And uh, one of them is when the new city hall was uh, discussed and, and built and you know everybody is so happy about that, we still have this building. And I thought this building was unsafe. And that's why we built the new building. That was my understanding, but we're maintaining this building too. That's money. Um, I don't mind a bit uh, paying firemen and policemen more and hiring more because they are in desperate need and the city is in desperate need of more uh, responders but um, but it just seems to me that there should be an accounting of where this money will go and why we need to have such a, a tax hike and especially at this time when things are not getting better but much worse and and yet we're expecting that people should understand that the city needs what they say they need. I just think there should be an accounting for every penny. And I think that should be a public record of every penny. And um, anyway, that's thank you so much for letting me sneak in at the last minute. Additional comments? You didn't answer my question. Is there a, who should I go to to talk about getting a cat for seniors? So, um, Paula, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close the public comment, and then we're going to address a few questions. 
I just have to officially close it before we start any sort of discourse. So no more comments. Okay, so this time we'll close public comment and we will bring it back to the council for a quick discussion because there were a few questions. Um, Brian, that's appropriate? Okay. Um, so we had a few questions come up. Yeah, George. Oh, I, I was just going to offer some thoughts about the last. You know what? We'll, we'll, we'll follow protocol. We'll bring it back to the council for discussion. So go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to address your concerns that you had raised about this building. This building is actually getting torn down actually in the matter of weeks. Um, we haven't been able to move into the new council chambers yet because of some um, delays in supply chain uh, stuff that is making it hard for us to broadcast from that room. So we're, we're trying desperately to get out of here as soon as possible. And then this will be leveled and uh, redeveloped a, as an area. So we have every intention of getting over there as soon as possible. Frankly, we're all sad that we're not over there right now because, you know, as much as we love this building, we need to get out of it. It's, it's, um, it's time. Yes. Yeah. Well, that we're in, we're in negotiations at the, t at, at exploring different options at this point. Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to clarify that one issue. Um, Councilor Ellsworth. I, at least one citizen was asking about where they can find how taxes are spent in Provo City. And Provo City publishes both a citizen's budget, which is kind of an abbreviated or high level version of the budget that you can view online. And you can also dig into the full budget report and see down to the cent where money is being spent. Um, and so it's, it's simple if you just Google Provo City budget click on the first link and then you can go through this year's budget and last year's budget and the last year's budget. And um, we have budget hearings throughout the spring and summer and we're interested in everyone's feedback on the budget every single year. We don't raise taxes every single year, but we do update and adopt and pass a budget every single year. And we're constantly asking for inputs on that. Um, typically citizens don't come out, but we'd love your, your ideas and opinions. Um, and, I just Googled. Oh, hold on one sec. I just want to say, so in general, um, we usually don't have people calling from the back of the room. So I think what we need to do is if there is a, a question. You can just email us if you have questions well, and we could address those online. Yeah. Right. Or I was going to say a, a council member could. Yeah. I, just in general, we don't do like the, the back and forth of, of like a, you know, especially not from the, um, if you're not at the pulpit and at a microphone and such, because it makes it hard for the recorder to record things and such. So how about this? We'll answer, we're going to have the council answer questions. And then I'm sure, I'm sure the council, any council members who are able to, will be around to hang out and answer additional questions after, if that's all right. So if anyone wants to see the city's budget, it's, all I did was Google Provo City Budget, and it was the very first link on Google. So it's a very simple way to find the budget and not have to comb through the city's website. Um, another question that somebody asked was about uh, seniors and finding tax relief for seniors. Um, the, really, the appeal authority there is the Utah State Legislature and the Utah State Tax Commission. They create all laws and rules and regulations, to my knowledge, around how uh, political subdivisions of the state of Utah can tax. Um, and if there's other comments there, chime in. Council Shipley. I was just gonna say there, there is an abatement program for seniors over 66. Uh, a lot of people don't know about it. Um, as a financial advisor, you know, I, I, if somebody's on a fixed income, they should look into that. It does have income thresholds. I mean, there, there are some rules associated with it, but anybody over 66 that's concerned about property tax should, should look into it. So it's through the state administered by the counties as far as an abatement program official through the state. Yeah, but Paula doesn't look a day over 45, so we're out of, she's out of luck. She disclosed her age, so that's the only way I know. <laughs> okay. it, says the, it says the counties on the state website, it says the county administers that program by state law, though. So it's a program that the state came up with and has the rules on, but the counties themselves, I think, administer it. Thank you, Councilor Shipley. Councilor Whipple. 
Right. So if you want more information about applying for those programs, you can go to the Utah County Treasurer or Auditor's Office. So that's at 100 East Center Street in Provo, you know, the big county building there. And there are five different property tax relief programs. So there is the one for seniors that council member Shipley mentioned. There's um, one for veterans, one if you're indigent, um, armed services, uh, veterans one. So there are a couple of different options and they have information about these programs and applications for them there as well. Um, we don't administer that as the city, but that's where you can go get it. Thank you, Councilor Whipple. Councilor Hanley. Yeah, I forgot. I wanted to say one more thing in response to um, Kathleen's question. We I, we mentioned this at the beginning, but um, the, the part of the motivation for us is, um, I mean, it's kind of twofold. One is we have really serious concerns about our ability to cover our public safety needs in the city. And you mentioned police, and that's something that, that we, every single year, uh, need to hire more police officers than we have money to hire. And this... Uh, uh, modest increase would allow us uh, essentially to cover the salary of one one officer. It won't help us cover his his or her equipment, um, but we could consider other ways to cover that uh, gap. But that's that's our intention is something that will help us increase our ability to provide more public safety for the for the community. Thank you, Councilor Hanley. Um, so Shipley. Sorry, just to go back to your question about how we could potentially have a cap within the state, that would be something to appeal to the state legislature, like um, Ms. Ellsworth was speaking to. The, the, the city, the, we, we wouldn't cap it ourselves. Um, we, it's already artificially capped for us, you know, without something like this. But the states and different states do have different policies for, you know, California is the, the the frequent example, right? For for seniors, where they if you stay in a home, you you get capped out on your on your rate increases. Hasn't gone very well financially for the state to do that, but it, it's something that states could look at uh, as a state. So most of these property tax rules and laws, truth in taxation itself, it's not our term. It's the state. It's their it's their policy that we have these hearings, and I think it's a good policy to make sure that we have public hearings where people can ask questions and get as much information as they can. But again, state state law dictates uh, the policy. Additional comments. I, I guess I wanted to address just broadly there there's might be a, a misunderstanding of you know if, if your if your bill is going up seven hundred dollars like mine is going up about six hundred you know only only five dollars of mine is going to be from this this particular tax that we're talking about today the other 595 is coming from other entities that you know we don't have a have a say in so I just wanted to broadly address that, that today we're only talking about, you know, that three, four, five dollars that's coming from the city of general uh, fund tax. So hopefully that helps, um, you know, everyone understand that, the, you know, the 20 something percent increase or 30 percent increase is, is not coming from uh, from the city. Um, all right, Karen, do you want to address a couple of things that you heard that you you wanted to talk about? Go ahead. Yeah, because this is something that, that originally confused me as well. And, and I could tell that several of you um, kind of wondered the same thing. So so in the video, it was talking about how even though um, property or, yeah, so, so even though some things are going up, other things are coming down. We have to work with the same budget. Say, say we're the Provo City government is getting a hundred thousand dollars total for their budget from property tax that doesn't change what changes each year is the county tells us the new rate that will apply to all these properties in order for us to get that hundred thousand dollars so sometimes the rate goes up and sometimes the rate goes down 
in order for us to get more than the hundred thousand dollars we have to say we we need more and we tell how much more and then the county goes in looks at the values of all the properties and makes the rate match the amount we're going to get so so i know that's incredibly confusing when your rate is popping up and down and there are times like the gentleman said you know the rate went down for him the amount went down for him but but that's because there are so many crazy factors that go into this that includes growth in the city that that impacts the amounts that are that are coming in obviously the housing market's been all over the place um, if if your property improves like say you you remodel your house and it's worth a lot more you're going to change the value of your home and, and the amount of taxes you're paying. So there are a lot of different things that are happening, but the city is still getting that same amount of money that we've committed to budget for. So County. Utah County. So the county government handles all this tax process. They're the ones that are issuing your tax statement that you got in the mail. There's a county commission. So we have three county commissioners. If you go to the Utah County offices, which are on University and uh, 100 South, um, you, you can visit their offices and that's where you would find the information on how to appeal the, the valuation of your property, as well as applying to any of the programs that were mentioned that provide some tax relief in certain categories. Now, having said that, I would say just, um, to not mislead you about where to appeal, they don't have any control over the process either. <laughs> they are following the process that's prescribed to them by the state. So there are state rules that say how they determine what that rate is and, how, and what they value. Now they do make some decisions because they, they have an office that handles valuation uh, determinations and if you think that your if your value if you think your valuation is too high, and I don't mean your tax bill, I mean what they say your house is worth, there's a process by which you can appeal that to them, and that would affect your overall tax bill if you successfully appealed that. But all of this process that Karen was describing about how they determine what the rate is is not is not something that they are doing in a discretionary manner. They're just following the rules. So unless Utah County commissioners actually vote for the Utah County line on your bill to, 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 for that rate to change, the rest of it, they're just administering, not making decisions about. I've said too much. Anybody else got a comment before I go again? Okay. I've said as much as you, but well, you gave me the green light. <clears throat> well, yeah, one other thought is I think what's um, you know painful for all of us is inflation. And the problem that we face um, at the city level is that the costs of having police officers, maintaining roads, doing the kinds of things we try to do to serve the public, those two are going up. And so our ability to cover our costs goes down if the, the, the graph that uh, Karen showed at the beginning where you, you could see that our, um, the dollar that we re for every dollar that we receive um, through property taxes is actually buying less and less for the city. Um, so that's, that's the conundrum. And our, I, think, I think I'm speaking for everyone on the council, but I think our, our thought process is that um, <clears throat> We don't want to do something like throw a 43% increase in one year, like this gentleman said. Um, we do think it's wiser for us to be thinking about um, incremental coverage to help keep some pace with cost of living. We're still not keeping pace with it with, by this increase by any means, but um, it's better than keeping it at, at zero because that means we're losing every year. So to, to Pam's question about plan B on something like this, uh, plan B is to continue the status quo and not have increases on property tax for the city of Provo. And that just widens that gap of, of the services that we're trying to be consistent and sustainable with without consistent and sustainable funding sources. 
So as a principle of finance, we try to match, you know, consistent revenue with, you know, with expenses. And what's been happening over the past 20 years is the city of Provo, in essence, has been bailed out by significant sales tax improvements and revenue. And that's helped. Honestly, that's, that's been the, the, our ability to raise our employees' wages and keep them competitive and to hire the people that we've needed as a city to, to have our public safety where it needs to be has been contingent on the fact that sales tax has been so good. But at some point, that will change and we'll go through cycles where sales tax won't be as good. And we need sustainable sources of funding for the sustainable things that our citizens expect to have, like public safety. Um, it's not a sustainable method that we've got going right now where we say, we'll just hope for the best from sales tax and fund, you know, the increases that our city needs in public safety from that. Uh, that source isn't going to always be increasing at the level that it has been in recent history. So we're just trying to match a sustainable source with the things that our citizens expect to be sustainable, like public safety. Councillor Ellsworth. <laughs> It, just to simplify the explanation and Councillor Shipley and Councillor Handley did a great job. I was just thinking of like a household economy and if you're having more children and uh, your household is growing and inflation increases and you pay more at the grocery store and more at the gas pump, um, but your income stays the same over time and does not even meet pace with inflation, uh, it, then you're just cutting back on every single expenditure until uh, you just can't make ends meet. And so every corporation and, and certainly governments are very frugal as we are open and welcome public scrutiny. Um, but we've been tightening the belt for many years and uh, in order to provide an adequate level of service for public service, um, for public safety, this is the path that we have forward. Additional comments? Councilor Fillmore. I guess I had to throw in my two cents. Uh, raising taxes, even in small increments, is never a good thing or fun thing to do, right? And it, it's, it's an unpleasant thing for us to do. But we have to face the reality of the inflationary world we live in. And our costs are going up just like local businesses. And we're having to pay more for salaries, for uh, infrastructure, uh, and we've also got a growing population. We have more people to serve. Uh, so we're just trying to be prudent. Uh, in 31 years, Provo City's only raised its rate once. That was just for 2% plus. And we just feel like we've got to have an inflationary adjustment, even though it doesn't, it doesn't go all the way. But it would be imprudent of us not to take that seriously. Otherwise, we continue falling further behind, and we don't certainly don't want to go in debt to cover the difference. We've been very fortunate the past couple of years. I mean, it kind of, I guess, depends on your on your political viewpoint, but we've been the recipients of some major funding from Washington uh, during the pandemic, uh, big chunks, millions of dollars. Uh, we've also been the beneficiary of huge increase in sales tax revenues because the economy locally and otherwise has been pretty good the last few years. But we can't rely on those things. I don't expect we're ever going to see these kind of large federal monies coming out of Washington. You know, whether, whether we agree with the, the logic or the philosophy or the prudence behind them, they came and we received them when we've put them to good use as one time monies. Uh, Sales tax is, uh, is based on the relative prosperity of our local economy. Uh, that's subject to substantial decline if things go, go downhill. Uh, and so we, we can't rely on those revenue sources long term. And as a city, we have really two primary responsibilities as a city council. One is public safety. I mean, that is at the top of the list for all of us. And we simply have to address the fact that we have some deficiencies with our current police force. And even one new officer isn't going to bridge that gap, but it, it helps. Uh, the second is that we, uh, our stewardship is to provide for the long-term economic viability of our city. That, that we don't end up 
in the ditch, like some towns and cities will when things go downhill. And inevitably, with this economy, we're going to have some volatility. We're just trying to be prudent and, and, and face inflation straight on. And we, we hope that's appreciated. Please keep the numbers in mind. Uh, the city's portion of your property tax bill you get every year from the county is only 19%. Uh, and we're only increasing it less than our, our share, less than 2%. It's going to come out to, what is it, uh, $3.87 $3 per average household in Provo per year. Uh, it's fairly modest, but we feel like we need to do something to counterbalance inflationary pressures. The large increase, I mean, the disparity, you folks are hearing that, you know, the average household uh, tax attributable to Provo City is $3.87. And you're saying, why has my bill gone up 500 or six or $700? It's not Provo City, okay? It's the other, uh, the other governmental entities that have deeds they have to address over which we have absolutely no control. And so you, you have legitimate concerns and we encourage you to express those concerns in the appropriate forum to the appropriate parties. But please understand we're trying to be as careful and as modest and as prudent as we can. And, and we feel that's the right thing to do. Councilor McKay. Um, a couple people asked about the appraisal of the homes. And so the appraisal of the homes has gone up a lot <clears throat> and that's by the county, correct? And I know I appealed it one year with my house and you just, there's a process, there's like an email address on your property taxes. And I just sent a letter along with some comps from a realtor that were comparable to my house. And I did get it reduced. Um, so it was a simple process of emailing it and then they got back to me. Yep. Can I talk to you after? <laughs> Kind of know how she did that. Councillor Whipple. Yeah, so I just, um, I'm really grateful that the, the county administers this for us because looking at mine, there are, what, eight different taxing entities on there. And I'm really glad that I get one tax bill instead of eight separate bills. Um, but that does lead to confusion because you're getting one bill instead of eight separate bills. But it's it's a consolidated bill with the taxes from all of these different groups. And I think one reason that Provo City hasn't been doing a truth in taxation to you know keep up with inflation on these rates is because we know these other entities are taxing you. So we haven't wanted to pile on, right? And to, to add to that burden. Um, but it means that we haven't done anything since 2015. And that's not a sustainable course of action for us. So even though we know that the school district or the, the Water Conservancy Board you know, has these needs and, and they will explain and justify that to you as best they can at their meetings, um, we couldn't just not continue to not do anything. And so as, as Councillor Fillmore has, has talked about, we've decided it's better to do this very modest and prudent course of small incremental increases. And so we've done it this year. We may well do this again next year, another tiny little, little increase. So that way you can kind of plan for that so that we don't ever dump a big like 24% increase or anything like that on you. Um, that would be completely devastating to a household budget and we don't want to be responsible for that. Additional comments or questions from the council? Okay, we'll go ahead and we'll close discussion. And at this point, if there's no objection, we will now adjourn the truth and taxation public hearing by unanimous consent. Thank you all for attending. Linda, Pam, Richard, Paula, Nevin, Kathleen, and Viviana, Viviana uh, for commenting. Record.